Now we need to multiply decimals by 100. So first we have the 0 0.5 times 100. The way to multiply decimals is to write out the number, so 0 0.5, and then copy down the decimal point, so it's directly below. Then we're multiplying, so the number is getting bigger, and we're multiplying by 100, which has two zeros, so the digits are moving two squares to the left. So if we copy down this 0, 1, 2 squares to the left, and do the same with this 5, we now have 0, 5, and then an empty square before the decimal point. But we know that the place value before the decimal point is the 1's place value, and we can't have an empty 1's column, so we need to write a 0 in this square. That gives us 0, 5, 0, and a decimal point on the end. Now when we have a decimal point on the end of a number, and nothing after it, we have a whole number. So our answer is 50, because we can ignore this zero in our hundreds column. Next we have 0 0.04 times 100. So we write the number out and copy down the decimal point. We're multiplying by 100, so digits are moving two squares to the left. Now that's because in the number 100 we have two zeros, so digits are moving two squares. But it's also really because when we multiply by 100, we can think of that as multiplying by 10 and then by 10 again. And we know that when we have 10 of something, digits move to the place value to the left. So if we copy down this 0, 1, 2 squares to the left, do the same with this 0 and with this 4, we get the decimal point on the end of our number. So we have a whole number. Our answer is 4, because we can ignore zeros at the start of a whole number. We can ignore the zero in our hundreds column and in our tens column and just show the four ones. Next, we have 0 0.54 times 100. So we write the number out, copy down the decimal point and move the digits two squares to the left. That gives us the decimal point on the end of our number, so we have a whole number. That's 54, because we can ignore zeros at the start of a whole number. Now notice 0 0.54 is the same as 0 0.5 plus 0 0.04, and that's why our answer, 54, is the same as 50 plus 4. What we've done here is the same as we've done in the previous questions, but instead of doing it one digit at a time, we've moved the five tenths and the four hundredths in the same question. So now we have 5.4 times 100. Again, we write the number out, copy down the decimal point, and move the digits two squares to the left. But now we have an empty square before the decimal point, and we know that the place value before the decimal point is the ones column, and we can't have an empty ones place value column, so we need to write a zero in this square. So now that we have the decimal point at the end, we know that our answer is a whole number, so that's 540. And it's really important to remember the zero in the ones, because if we didn't have that, the 5 would be in our 10s, and the 4 would be in our 1s. So we need the 0 to show that the 4 is 4 10s, and the 5 is now in the 100s column. Next, 5.04. So we write the number out, and to multiply by 100, we copy down the decimal point, and move the digits 2 squares across, or 2 squares to the left. So now we have the decimal point at the end of our number, so our answer is 504. And this time, it's really important to remember to include this zero, because we need to show that the 5 is now in the hundreds column. If you have a zero between other digits, we need to include the zero in our answer. We can't ignore it. And finally, 50.4 times 100, we copy down the decimal point, 
In 100, we have two zeros, so the digits are moving two squares, and we're multiplying, so the number's getting larger, the digits are moving two squares to the left. Now, we have an empty ones column, so we need to write a zero in this empty square to give us our answer, 5040. Notice that this answer is 10 times bigger than our previous answer, and that's because 50.4 is 10 times bigger than 5.04. So let's have another look at this question, 0 0.04 times 100. Now we know that the second digit after the decimal point is the hundredths digit, so to show 0 0.04, we can show four parts out of 100 on this rectangle. But when we multiply by 100, what we're really doing is making the number 100 times bigger. So if we split up these four hundredths and make each one 100 times bigger, you can see that we now have four whole rectangles coloured in, and that's why our answer is 4.